Hey, it's Samantha Hartley of the Profitable Joyful Consulting Podcast. In season nine, we have been talking about the brand called you. And today I wanted to talk about uh, productivity practices, work-life balance, and how we can achieve those better using rituals. It's kind of an odd word, um, but I've uh, really enjoyed bringing it into my life and referring to all kinds of things that I do in my business um, and in my life as being rituals. Uh, So I have invited a special guest to talk with us about this today, Michelle Bondizio is a writer, business coach, and consultant. She's the founder of Growth Sessions and the host of the Creating Cadence podcast. Prior to starting her solopreneur journey in 2018, Michelle, who goes by Mish, uh, built a 20-year career in communications and project management, working across digital and creative industries for a host of both corporate and private clients. So please join me in welcoming Mish. Welcome, Mish. Thanks so much for inviting me on, Samantha. So I am fascinated by the uh, idea of rituals, and I I know that that's something that you have worked with. So let's begin with a story of a client that you've worked with to put rituals in place, and how did that go for them? Sure. So one that comes to mind is uh, just before the lockdown, I started working with a small female-led design collective and architectural firm. They had decided to go out on their own because they'd been experiencing an environment which was very masculine and toxic and patriarchal, and they were wanting to escape that because it was causing a lot of high stress and burnout for them. And so when they started their own business, they knew that they wanted to follow more of a purpose-driven focus, and they wanted their core values to be reflected in their culture. So they wanted it to be a healthy culture, and they wanted it to be an inclusive culture. So they'd been running for about six months when I started working with them and I ran a series of six workshops over six weeks where we looked at foundational practices and behaviors and rituals and things that they could initiate within the way that they work to support their process and their culture and their performance. And so they took the learnings and the outcomes of those workshops and they initiated it into their day-to-day process and into their communications and into their outputs for their clients. And as a result, it's become a key differentiator for them. They're flourishing and they've become so popular in terms of their niche positioning that they're having to turn work away. And that's actually a good thing because they are staggering the way that they work to support their well-being and their clients are happy to wake because they know that the output and the quality of the work is worth the wait. So that's one way we initiated quite a few different rituals for them to help them both start and end their work days, but also to support and strengthen their team cohesion. Oh, fabulous. Well, I would love to hear some specific ones, but first let's back up and um, meet you. So uh, who are your clients and how do they find you? Sure. So I work with um, predominantly entrepreneurs, coaches, consultants, and solo business owners. And then I do also work with small teams because I come from a creative and digital background. Um, I kind of know how they work. And so the application of the work that I do, it applies to them as well as to independence. Um, And as you mentioned in the intro, my background's in communications and project management. And then about four years ago, I transitioned to become a freelance writer and a business coach. And I founded a platform called Growth Sessions in 2018. And the reason that I founded the platform was because of my own personal experience with burnout. I had gone through an excessive period of chronic stress for two years. It made me very ill. I checked out of life and I wasn't able to work for more than a year. And as part of my recovery, I created a toolkit and a framework for getting better, staying better and working better because I realized that the way that we're working is broken. It's not supported. Yeah. And I also discovered that there's loads of people out there like me suffering from burnout when they didn't necessarily need to. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, the pandemic over the last two years has exacerbated that. So there's a need for this even more. So Grow Sessions has evolved into a platform for um, coaching, tutoring, training, learning, and that looks like private coaching, self-paced online um, training courses. And then I also do talks and workshops on specific topics related to creating cadence, digital wellness, intentional productivity, and the future of work. And then besides that, I also have my Creating Cadence podcast and my Cadence newsletter, which are free curated training and learning around those topics as well. Just super. Well, we'll put links to all of that in the show notes. So uh, I think when we, you know, I, as I mentioned, I have been looking for somebody to talk about rituals besides just me, because while I love them and have um, implemented them in my business, I feel like there's so much more to say about them. And uh, just a couple of episodes ago, I did a podcast on um, burnout and boredom because, uh, you know, reasons, right? Uh, All of us have uh, been through that. I think, especially a lot of us who uh, were in corporate, there was so much burnout around me. And then as uh, you bring up, like with the pandemic, there, it, it seemed like, oh, there's 
there's this going to be this wonderful be, uh, ability to be able to work from home and things like that. And now nobody shuts off because we're at home and it's the workplace. And I feel like what people who haven't been working from home for all this time, as I have been doing, uh, are learning is when the boundaries are, you know, it's all one space for most people, you know, I mean, they can even have a dedicated office and it can still be hard not to go back in there, uh, especially, yeah. you know, when we have phones and you're just, you know, scrolling through and then you get uh, email notifications. So um, what are some of the rituals that you have put in place that will prevent us from burning out? Sure. So first of all, I think it's important to understand what a ritual is at its heart. You know, we, we tend to associate them with things outside of work that might be related to celebrations or grief or something along those lines. Mm -hmm. But we also are involved in rituals every day without us even being aware of that. And so, for example, you know, you, I know you're a pet owner. So when you take your dog for a walk, there's a certain set of behaviors that you are involved in it to get ready to do that. That's mm -hmm. a ritual. It's basically a combination of multiple habits that come together to create a system or pattern of behavior. And they connect us emotionally to a, some sense of purpose, um, which helps us in some cases to deal with things like fear or anxiety or uncertainty. And those are things that are prevalent in our workplace as much as outside of our workplace. So the bonus about having rituals, and it's a very important part of this concept of intentional productivity that I talk about, is to use them to help us stay grounded while we're able to create momentum in the work that we're doing. They can help us to make considered choices and design better sets of behaviors that will support us, not just our productivity, but also our well-being and our creativity. Because even if you don't necessarily call yourself a creative, what we do is creative in the way that we work. So it's important to recognize that. So in terms of examples for rituals, um, things that I do personally and things that I advocate for my clients, the first of them, it's a set of them and they actually start before you even do, they're outside of your work day, but they support your work. And for me, that's a morning and evening ritual, which involves writing. Mm -hmm. So I have a notebook, a lot of people do journaling in some way or another, there's a, an element of gratitude and visualization, but then I also focus on in the mornings, three important things I want to achieve in that day and what I'm hoping to get out of it. And then at the end of the day at night, when I climb into bed, I'll look, look at what happened during the day and I'll write about what happened during the day and what I've learned and what might need to go better. And that process of reflection where you are in the mm -hmm. morning, you're looking forward and then you're coming back to the present. And then in the evening, you're looking back and you're coming back to the present. It's not just a reflection process, but it's also helping you to stay on track with your goals. And it's also helping you to stay aligned with the person that you want to be in terms of the work that you're doing. Mm -hmm. So that sets you up for your day. Yeah. And it helps to keep you grounded. And then the next one is when you're starting your work day to help you get yourself into that work mode. So for example, for me, I put my tea or coffee or water on the right hand side of my laptop. I open up my laptop turn it on while it's booting on. I open up my bullet journal on the left side because I'm left-handed mm -hmm. and I'll have a little review of what's due on the day. And then instead of opening my email, I'll open my calendar first. Mm -hmm. Because on my calendar, I batch all of my tasks and I color code everything because I'm a very visual person. Me too. So I can see at a glance, <laughs> I can see at a glance what's a meeting, what's deep work, what, mm -hmm. what is my day look like? Yeah. That set of behaviors helps prepare my mind to start. Mm -hmm. It's like, okay, we're now in the word mode to get, to get working. And the same happens at the end of the day. There's a series of steps that I take. So it's not just about closing the computer down. It's reviewing what's in the bullet journal, making sure I've ticked off my tasks, checking what's coming up, and then clearing the desk, clearing the decks, basically. And there's another way of, um, of saying that it's called resetting the room. So uh -huh. say for example, at night, you might yeah. be watching television and then when you're finished, you take your cups to the kitchen and you yeah. clump up your cushions and you prepare everything so the room's clean and fresh for you. You mm -hmm. do the same in your workspace because clutter creates stress. And the last thing you want is to come back in the morning and everything's disorganized. See yesterday's mess. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. So, so just one thing I want to ask you about here, because I'm speaking on uh, myself by any means, but I know I've heard from some people that this concept of the end of the work day is like, I'm, we're not quite sure what you're talking about. So um, what's, uh, what are some ways that we can um, create such a thing that you speak of? Sure. So it, it is about a tr transition, essentially. So some of us don't have the good fortune of having an office where we can close that door. But if you can shut things down in your mind, you're telling your mind that actually I'm transitioning out of work. So it's things like closing the applications, actually turning your computer off, closing the book, 
leaving everything just so you're telling your mind with all of these tiny little yeah. behaviors you're signaling that it's time to transition to the next part of your of your day or your evening because our work mm-hmm. hours are different for everybody really and yeah. it's that idea of closing down and shutting which makes it harder to come back and turn it on and just go oh what? this is just something i forgot <laughs> just one more thing mm-hmm. come back in exactly yeah yeah and at this point, what's really important is about our phone usage and our rituals around our phone usage. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, we, we're all slightly addicted and they are really good communication tools for our business, but they're also the major, fra- uh, what is it, attention fragmenter in our lives. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so when you have deep work tasks that you need to get involved in, you might be writing a proposal or preparing for a speech or something, you have got to remove that from the equation entirely. So there's a ritual that you can have around that. Maybe you put it behind you or you put it in the cupboard, or you turn off the notifications. The point is out of line of sight and out of reach of your hand mm-hmm. so that you focus on what you're doing and that is incredibly important yeah you know, I, and I understand that a lot of us use that for making calls and so on but it's also about segmenting your time yeah. and so and actually that. studies show that if it's even if it's in the room with you it has a draw and so it actually is better to put it completely in another room so um I I, I love the idea of rituals and I think a little ritual of putting it in a, like a cupboard for like a little time out or maybe on the you know on the bed so it can have a little rest but you know whatever uh we need to do to create a sense of like no it's in its place having a rest so that I can be doing my thing I, I think those kind of intentional statements really help as you're saying like completely shutting down the programs and turning off the computer um it it turns turns off a certain, you know, it, it sends a message to our subconscious. And I think uh, putting the phone away completely sends a message to the subconscious. What I notice is sometimes in deep work, I'm like, well, I could just look something up real quickly on the phone and I'll keep reaching for it. But then what I realize is, you know, you can use, you can do all of that right here and that, that will wait, like write it down on paper because it's just, you know, an addiction to that kind of um, instant gratification. And what I'm usually looking for in those times is a mental break or an yeah. escape from the concentration. And we just need to retrain ourselves to be able to concentrate. To sit through the discomfort that comes with that. Mm-hmm. Yes, of exactly. course. Um, so there's some other things that we can do as well. If you are working regularly with clients or with a team and you may have meetings, there's two things that I find really beneficial, little rituals that you can initiate. So very often, whether you're in a room with people or you're having an online conversation with them, we arrive, we've just come off another call, we're all over the place, our minds are not focused on what it is we're about to do. So just one minute of conscious breathing where everybody either lowers their gaze or closes their eyes at the beginning, has that moment of deep inhale and exhale for a minute. You're Mm -hmm. getting out of your head and into the physical or digital room so that everybody can be really focused on what needs to happen. Mm -hmm. And then as a, um, the other thing that works well, and this is one of the um, rituals that the team I mentioned, I was working with the success story was around sharing one good and one challenging thing that's happened to them in the week and how that might, you know, it creates empathy and it creates connection and team cohesion. Well, and and what I like two- about it is, um, you know, you mentioned like people kind of feel a little awkward feeling vulnerable. And what I think is really good about it is we know that vulnerability makes people feel closer, but also um, uh, there's a difference between personal and private. Um, right. You don't have to share private things. If you have something really, really private, that's terrible, that's going on, people are usually okay hearing, well, you know, I have a private thing that's going on and it's really upsetting me and um, I'm distracted by that this week or whatever. But I think- sure. Um, again, naming those things, it helps people to understand, well, what about me as personal? Oh, that I'm a pet owner and that I have this and this. And then what about me as private? Well, you know, our, um, you know, the family's dealing with mom having Alzheimer's or some, but I don't feel like bringing that forward right now. So that distinction, I think can help um, people uh, to feel uh, safer in vulnerability. I agree. And, you know, the thing is that we carry how we feel with us. So whatever's happening outside of work is going to impact yeah. on work and, this, and vice versa. So mm-hmm. I think it can be really helpful for a team if you're working with them to understand what's going on that might be impacting on behavior yeah. or performance so that they could potentially also step up and provide support where it's needed if you don't know how to ask for it. So those things are really powerful. 
And there's just two more uh, rituals that I wanted to speak about. And the first is around work wins. So uh-huh. very often, if you're, if you're working on your own, you know, as it's in our human nature to seek validation, to be recognized, to feel like we belong. And often when you work on your own, you don't get that. So thinking about what rituals you can create around celebrating both the small and the big wins. And maybe that's treating yourself to something personal, or maybe it's buying something or investing some, in something for the business, mm-hmm. or maybe it's sharing about the achievement that you've received. And very often we forget about those things. They're wonderful in the moment and then they're forgotten. But actually, yeah. we can use those to keep us supported and motivated. To, to keep moving with what we're doing yeah and then the last one is around transitions so for a time in my uh, project management career I worked uh, in corporate events and I'd be working in you know one intensive project for maybe six to nine months which would culminate in these big events so there was this big crescendo and then the project would finish and we'd feel so flat mm-hmm. because your day is gone you know yeah. what the things that occupied your day were gone so then you'd kind of think, well, how do I get out of this and start getting ready for the next thing? And it, mm-hmm. it was it was a hard time, whether it was a few days or a week or a month, you'd feel dreadful. So I started initiating rituals to help me make peace with the fact that there is a natural dip after yeah. these type of events. And then also to kind of find ways to let go of the fragments of that past events so that you can move forward and sometimes when you're working with multiple projects at the same time it's about creating those transitions in your day so what are the little rituals that you can do to help you switch from one project to another mm-hmm, and maybe that's mm-hmm. going for a walk or getting up and making a cup of tea yeah. but it's a, it's a simple thing that you always do to help create the switch yeah, definitely. I think it's really critical during the course of the workday to get up in between meetings. I mean, I do know a number of um, uh, colleagues and clients who sit down and then they are up like 14 hours later and that the whole day was a blur. Uh, and so I've always said, I'm, I'm grateful with dogs, you know, the dogs need to go out and they will um, often come and get me and tell me so and, and remind me, oh, and I say this because most of us are women. Oh, I've had to pee for the last three hours. Uh, I've, I've always said that for women, a lot of, um, a lot of the reasons that we're not mindful is because like things are, you know, hurting us and bothering us and the chair's not kind of blah, blah, blah. So we're in physical discomfort a lot of the day. And so mindfulness makes us just more aware of that. But, uh, the good news about that is that usually once you're really aware of uh, those things, they go away. Like you can make yourself more comfortable, you know, you get to attend to those needs and they just attack you because you've been ignoring them for so long. So I think these, um, the, the beauty of it and why I like the word ritual, because it has kind of sacred associations. Um, it, it, uh, helps us to give that kind of, you know, sacred or official or, um, you know, intentional attention to the things that, to our needs, uh, and are acknowledging that we have individual needs over the course of our day. And there are organizational needs, you know, everybody in the organization is probably experiencing some degree of these things. And so, uh, just being intentional about it helps us to take care of those things and create a more, um, you know, a comfortable work environment. Absolutely. I agree. And, you know, with everything that we've gone through over the last two years, people are seeking more purpose and more meaning in the work that they're doing. And there's there's one way that, you know, we can design the way that we work to support us better that brings, I know you talk about profitable and joyful business. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're looking at here is, you know, that brings more, how can we inject more joy into our day to day? And a lot of the ways that we can do that is through positive ritual. Positive ritual. And as you said in the beginning, you know, uh, turning away work or, or staggering and pacing our work. And speaking of staggering and pacing, uh, uh, you use the word cadence. So would you talk a little bit about um, what cadence means to you, uh, what, how we can use that and um, what role which rituals play in creating cadence? Sure. So um, I came up with the word cadence as part of my recovery process because this term work-life balance was being bandied about and I was finding it very unhelpful because it's a static concept. So what it implies is that everything has to be like this. And if something's out of balance, then, you know, you're winning at one thing and you're losing at another. And so for me, that wasn't helpful. And I realized that I wanted to be able to create momentum in all parts of my life, even though one might be demanding more in one particular moment. And so how do we create that cadence? And and the word is lovely in itself. It's very musical and has the sense of motion about it, but it's all about pace and understanding that at different times in your day or in your week or your month, you'll be required to put in a different kind of pace for your work and for your personal life, but that it's about creating that momentum and keeping that momentum. And how can you do that? And the way that we do that is through foundational practices, around sleep, movement, nutrition, meditation, and then also around how we work. So being more intentional in the way that we 
support ourselves at work. And that is things like putting the phone away for certain kinds of work, you know, making sure that you're getting up, making sure that you're moving, moving. And it may sound like it's all it's all very simple. It's not rocket science, but it's things that we don't do it because we haven't embedded them as habitual practices. But they're things that we can. And once you start doing them regularly, it becomes second nature. And it's so supportive in the way that we work. It's, it's, it's a benefit. Uh, totally. And I mean, this is the thing is like most solutions are not rocket science. Most solutions are quite simple, but as you're saying, we don't do them. You know, some of the things that you mentioned, I mean, I feel like reflection, just uh, I'll do reflection, uh, you know, with clients on a quarterly basis, but are we as business owners doing reflection on a weekly basis? Uh, and I love the idea of daily, you know, really sitting down and saying like, how did today go? Uh, and not being kind of, uh, you know, lost in the, the blur of everything. So, um, really more, uh, I think, intentionality around all starts and all endings, in including each meeting during the day. And um, and I love the idea of resetting. I think resetting is really important. And as you're saying, we tend to reset in certain areas, like you clear the table or we reset the living room, but do you reset your desk? So when you come in in the morning, um, it's easy. It's a pleasant place to sit down to, or is it like the tornado that you left um, yesterday. So uh, I, to me, I think we do this out of kindness for ourselves. And a lot of times I think, especially women business owners, we don't have a habit of being kind to ourselves uh, and, and having self-compassion. And it's like, well, you know, create the work environment that you want to have. And I think also it makes us our best self. And when we're our best selves, other people around us can do that. And we don't always give ourselves permission, but uh, as I keep saying, like when you give yourself permission, you are beginning to help the other people around you to give themselves permission as well. Yes, some people are going to resent you for a while, but they need to get over themselves uh, and do not, if you have uh, children, uh, gift this to the next generation. We want future generations to be even more self-compassionate and considerate of themselves and others. That's so important. You know, there's that old adage, you put your own air mask on before you put your child's on in the airplane. Yeah. And, and that self-compassion through that morning and evening ritual of writing, that's one way that you can introduce it. You know, mm -hmm. yeah. you have mantras and things. That I know it sounds very spiritual, but you have goals that you want to achieve in your work. Write them down, have little phrases that you can revert back to and things that are supportive about you as a person. It's, it's incredibly powerful because when we believe in ourselves, we achieve so much more. Uh -huh. Absolutely. I, you know, you've mentioned writing and I want to just talk to those who are, are going to take writing and think look too heavy. Uh, you also said bullet journal and I do a bullet journal. So when I sit down at my desk, I do um, things that are on my mind today. I have a, a notepad, that notepad file on, um, on Max. I've had a running one for many years, so I can kind of look back and see my own evolution. But I just sit down and write down the things that are on my mind today. It's usually three bullets long. Sometimes it's five, sometimes it's a sentence, and sometimes it's just a few words. So these don't have to be like, heavy journaling like we're not you know like right. um uh jane austen or someone here we're not writing the whole novel we're just you know getting things out of your mind because once they're out of your mind your brain is freed up to think about other things and, and knowing that you can come back to those later so um those i think are super helpful rituals fabulous so um you've shared a couple of places where people can find out more about you uh what is one action that you would like our listeners to take based on what we've heard today so we can't make change until we understand where we're at. We need to understand the baseline. So what I would suggest is that people reflect on where they're at at this moment. And that would be, you know, what are you doing in the first two hours of your day? And is that supporting you? Very often we're reaching for the phone and diving into the email rather than perhaps there's a better way that we could be using that morning time. Mm -hmm. uh, secondly, how are you using your day? What are your activities in the day? And which of those are supporting you or aren't? And what are you doing at the end of the day to help you transition away from work? And so those three things to give that some thought and to think about little ways that you can initiate change. Rituals are different. Rituals work differently for everybody. So I'm not going to say you must write. It might be something else for you in the morning. It might be meditation or taking the dog for a walk. But think about ways that you can initiate a little bit more mindfulness and intentionality into both before and after your work as well as when you work. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Fabulous. Love that. Love that. Uh, and I feel super inspired to do uh, all of those things. So with that, thank you so much, Mish. And uh, Mish and I are wishing all of you a profitable and joyful consulting business. Thanks for watching. I'd appreciate it if you'd like this episode. And if you enjoyed the show, why not subscribe? Be sure to click the bell to get notified when new episodes drop.